the three best tablets with support for a SIM card slot. The Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 will bring you a great experience, especially if you are looking for a great design, which comes with a nice keyboard, a nice pen and a powerful CPU. But let us start with the design because Samsung really focused on a design point here with all of its choices. First of all, you get a nice keyboard, which isn't as premium as one of the Apple alternatives, but it is way cheaper and in most cases, if you buy the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8, you will get this keyboard for free if you get a good deal. And this keyboard works via magnets. So the magnets are holding this in place here so that you can use it similarly to a laptop. And this is especially great if you are going on a trip and want to have something for the train you are taking because you can just put it there and type something on it. So this is really simple and really nice. But of course you can use this just as a normal cover if you want to protect your tablet and it even protects your cameras so they aren't standing out and even if you place it like this there won't be any weird bump or something like this so the cameras are protected really well and the front is of course protected really well as well. Then there's the included S Pen which is really fast and is especially useful if you want to draw something or if you want to take quick notes on the go and don't want to use the included keyboard. Because of course you can use this tablet without the keyboard on the back and I mean this should be an option and it is an option and if you want to you can remove the cover and just use the S Pen with it. Talking about removing the cover, if you look at the whole design of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 you will notice that it is a really modern design with an aluminium finish. So this is the whole thickness of this tablet. There isn't more to it, there isn't any hidden bulk like some other displays. This is just a design without anything added to it. And it is a really nice design, especially in comparison to some laptops, because it is really slim and really lightweight. It only weighs about 503 grams and it is 11 inches big. There are some bigger alternatives by the S8 series, but I personally prefer this size because it is the cheapest option. And if you go too big with the size, then you could just buy a laptop and don't really need a tablet for that. Then there are some features which I didn't mention about the S Pen. The S Pen has a 6.2 millisecond latency, fast enough to draw with it or do some quick notes and it connects via Bluetooth. Of course you need to charge this S Pen, but Samsung included a really smart way to charging it. You just put it here. So this isn't only design, but a function as well. If you put it there, it will be charged. And it's as simple as that. With the resolution you get a 1600 by 2560 resolution, which is okay, it is expected for this tablet, but what is a nice feature is the 120 hertz. So if this you will get a really fast scrolling experience, especially if you go on a browser or play some games, then those 120 hertz really comes in handy. Another feature which isn't commonly in some of the smartphones by Samsung, but can be found here, is the option to place a micro SD card in there to extend your storage up to one terabyte. Then you get four speakers and Samsung is one of the few companies which really provide great speakers. I would say on par with those speakers is only the Apple speakers. The other speakers are good as well, but not as great as those by Samsung. And those four speakers are placed in a array, so you get a really nice sound. The connection here is a Type-C connection, so standard there, but you get a USB, 3.2 connection so if you want to transfer your pictures or something like this from your tablet to let's say your laptop then you can do this easily with this because you have 10 gigabits per second speed. Of course there's a fingerprint sensor included as well and you get the Snapdragon 8 generation 1 CPU. This is a really fast CPU and an efficient CPU. So you can play all of the games out there in the Android store and you can do this with a long battery time. For the cameras that you will get, you will get a 30 megapixel back camera with a 6 megapixel ultra wide camera. And of course you will get a 12 megapixel selfie cameras. The selfie camera is located here. So this is a really nice place because if you put it on the keyboard, it will stay like this. And for most Zoom meetings or calls where you could use this, this is the right position, I would say. And in general, the cameras are really good. They aren't as good as the Samsung smartphone counterparts but they are more than usable and good enough for a tablet. And if you want to have more of a desktop experience, you can use Samsung DeX, which will 
order your symbols and make multitasking way easier to give you more of a Windows or a Mac experience. And this is especially great if you connect it to an external display. Let's say you are on a trip and you have a big TV there. You can just connect it to the smartphone, to this tablet and have something like your own desktop windows just with a tablet, which is a really great mode. For $240, you get a Doggy T10 tablet. And this tablet comes with a great hardware with 8 GB RAM, 128 GB storage, 8300 milliampere battery, and even a full HD plus resolution. But let us start with the hardware. You get 8 GB RAM, which is considerably more than most of the tablets in this price range. Because normally you get 4 to 6 GB, but here they upped it up to 8 GB, which is great. But even greater is the storage, because you get 128 GB. And even after the OS is installed, you have over 100 GB left, and you can even install an extra SD card if you want to have even more storage. So storage-wise, no complaints here and well above the average. Then there's a battery of 8300 mAh. This is great enough to go up to 7 hours in normal use, especially if you watch videos or something like that. If you play the main games, then you can expect up to 4 to 5 hours, but in normal use, you really will get the 7 hours, and this is nice. You can even charge it with quick charge from 18 watts, so it won't take that long to charge. The resolution is 1900 by 1200, this is full HD plus, and you get a Unisoc T606 8 core processor. And this is a really nice processor. So I won't say it's the best one, but it is enough to play most of the games, especially lighter games like Clash Royale. But it is efficient enough as well to not drain your battery as much as it could, so you can enjoy long video sessions. The outside is really nice as well. It is only 7.5 millimeters thick, which is not that much. It weighs 590 grams and it has small borders, so you get an 81% body ratio. The front camera is a 5 megapixel camera, you probably won't use it that often because it's not the greatest, but the back is considerably better. You get a 13 megapixel back camera, which can be used really well to make pictures of your landscape or just make a picture of your paper to store it. So all in all, this is a really great tablet for a great value. But let us start with the M1 chip, because this is a really important part of this tablet, which makes it so powerful, especially for creative work. And as I have a lot of creative work, this is really something I personally like and appreciate about this tablet. Because first, you can use it to make pictures with it, let's say you use Photoshop, then this can be used as an app in the Apple iPad Air, and of course, you can edit videos with it. And this is because of the newly released DaVinci Resolve for iPad. This is a really nice addition to the iPad ecosystem because now you can edit most of the videos you would otherwise have to use a laptop for, for a really great budget because an Apple iPad Air is way cheaper than a laptop but has a lot of power because of the M1 chip. Then you get a USB-C connection which has a little bit advantages and a little bit disadvantages. First the advantage is you get a USB 3.1 Gen 2 connection with an additional display port. So this port is really useful if you want to connect another screen to it. Let's say you want to get really near to the feeling of a laptop, then you can just connect an external display with it and it will feel really similar. But there's one disadvantage as well. There is a higher priced version of this Apple iPad Air, which will give you a Thunderbolt 4 connection, which is a little bit more versatile because you can connect a long range of dongles with it but generally this should be good enough for your use case. The display will give you a 10.9 inch display, which has a resolution of 2360 by 1640. This is really a lot of resolution, especially if you just have a 10.9 inch screen. I would even say it is a little bit too much, but I appreciate it, especially if you want to watch a video really close up. Then for this display, you get True Tone. This makes your display color accurate, which is again great for creative work because you can use it to color grade your pictures. Or if you just want to enjoy a nice video, then this True Tone is great as well because the video will get displayed as it was intended. And the display will even get up to 500 nits brightness. So even if you are in a really light room and there's sunshine directly on it, you can still see some details on the Apple iPad Air. Then of course there's the design and Apple as always nails the design down. Well, 
at least for me, because I like it if there's not so much rounded design, but more of a sturdy and flat design. And this will give you the Apple iPad Air. And the borders are really small as well, which will give it a really modern look. For the cameras, you will get two cameras, one 12 megapixel on the front and one 12 megapixel on the back. The nice addition on the back camera is that you can use those 12 megapixels to record in 4K. So if you want to make a nice video, then you can. And the selfie camera is great as well, but it isn't as well as some of the selfie cameras on your smartphone. So I rather use it not so often, but it's good enough. The five colors you will get with this are space gray, blue, rose, and two more colors. Those are pretty nice colors. I personally prefer the space gray because this looks really nice for me and you get nice specs as well. You can choose between 64 GB or 256 GB storage. This isn't a lot and especially for creative work, I would have loved it if they included a 1TB or 2TB option, but you can just plug in any SSD to the tablet to get your additional storage. But even with that, it is way more nicer if they had just the option to put the storage in the device, but it is what it is. Then it weighs just 460 grams and you get stereo speakers. Those stereo speakers are really well and there's only one brand which I can compare them to, which is Samsung. Because both of those brands make really great speakers, which I think is really important for a tablet because mostly you will consume a lot of videos with it. Then there are even some accessories you get with it. They aren't much, but you get a 20 watt charger and you get a one meter type C cable. And additionally, you can purchase a major keyboard or the Apple Pencil. The Apple Pencil will be useful for most of you people out there because you can take quick notes with it. And especially if you study something, then it is really nice. And the Magic Keyboard is a great addition if you want to use it as a workspace and want to replace your laptop a little bit with it.